Hi, just a quick programming note before the episode starts. As the beginning of semester has begun at the University of Virginia, Will and I decided we would try to record an episode live with our first day of class. The conceit was basically that we had been teaching for so long, and then over the summer we started a podcast, and hey, isn't this funny? And now we're doing a live show and tell some live show jokes. And as expected, the jokes kind of fell flat. <laughs> But we promised a live show episode and said, well, we're going to go ahead and, you know, put it out. And it turns out the audio is not as bad as I thought it would be, considering we're both wearing masks as we were recording this. And it was recorded through Zoom instead of on Audacity or Adobe Audition. So just throwing it out there that the quality of the audio for this episode is not up to our usual standard. Because we were masked, double masked in most ca- in both cases, and in a large room, and you can kind of hear some background noise. But if you're interested in what the first day of class looks like for me and Will as we teach our software engineering class, well, here you go. Request where two college professors take a second look at questions and answers from around the internet and from you, the listener. My name is Professor Will McBurney. And my name is Professor Mark Sheriff. And Will, it's our first live show. Can you believe it? Yeah. We've made it. <laughs> All these days of podcasting. And it we, helps to have a captive audience. We um, hit the big time. I, I, I'm expecting Squarespace. I'm expecting uh, Me Undies. I'm expecting Blue Apron. We're going to get all the big, all the big sponsors now. We're ready. Yeah. We're ready. Come on. Uh, no, no, all right, all right. How much how much do you think tickets were to the show? Um Yeah, that sounds that wow. that, that one sounded about right. What, um what, what cut of the ticket take do we get for that? Well, I, I think I think in-state students get get tickets on the cheap, if I oh. believe. Um but yeah. But yeah. I kind of is this I, I, I kind of forgot. Is this is this right? Yeah. Um I mean, I've been teaching on Zoom for a year. I mean, you know. This, this is yeah, just I, I, I mean, all that matters is waste up. You know, there's... yeah. I mean, I'm still sitting behind the desk. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's fine. It's totally That's fine. How that works. Well, it is wonderful to have you all here. Um, we have been uh, uh, we have been teaching together for uh, over a year now, and over the summer, we uh, decided we still liked talking to each other and answering questions. So yeah. we actually did start a podcast. And so we are doing a live show right now. Um, don't worry, we will edit out any any auditory student questions. You will not be on the podcast. Do not worry about that. No. But the whole point of the podcast is answering questions from the internet, from students, from whomever. And we, what is the syllabus day but answering questions? Yeah. So we have some questions that you submitted. This was the email that I, that I sent out the other day. We have some great questions here that we're going to go through. But we're also going to take a break at a certain point and let you start looking through the syllabus to start figuring out more questions to ask those so that you know what's going on this semester. So let's actually just start with a couple of these questions, then we'll get to let them look at the syllabus. So um, I've got one for you okay. right here. How did you get into education and did you ever go into industry? All right. So this is a question we got a lot. So the, the thing is, Sheriff and I have a little bit of a disappointing story when it comes to this. Thank you. Um, I included myself in this disappointment okay. anyway. Uh, so neither of us have really had full time industry positions. Uh, I started teaching in grad school and I went to grad school for all the reasons you're not supposed to go to grad school, which is I didn't like the job offers that I had at the time. Uh, so I was just figuring, let's go further into debt and see if something better comes along. Um, and he's here now. So I, I started teaching. <laughs> Silence. Wow. I love it. <laughs> I can tell I'm popular already. That's um, right. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so I started. Um, I started teaching in grad school at, as a way to eat food, which which felt important at the I, time. I'm pro food. Yeah, and um, I as well as to pay for, for my kitty, who I still have. Um, so I fell in love with that when I was doing my master's, decided to go get a PhD, and then uh, 
after my PhD, taught at Penn for three years, decided that being from a relatively smaller city in West Virginia, that Philadelphia was a little much. <laughs> so yeah, I, so yeah. I ended up uh, uh, moving here and, and have been here now uh, over two years. And you've actually been teaching from home more than you've been teaching yes, from so, here. Yes, so, so in, in the two <laughs> years I have been at UVA, I have been in my basement more than I have been in this building uh doing my job <laughs> what's yeah. up second years yeah <laughs> yeah you know i was expecting more response in a live show than, just, yeah. than we usually laugh at each other but that's fine yeah well, well in fairness we laugh at each other a little bit too much that is fair do you yeah. have a question for me uh well do you want to answer that yourself oh just briefly i come from a family of teachers i've always loved teaching um, I actually was at IBM for eight, for a year and a half to two years working at IBM while I was doing research. Um, beyond that, I did a couple of startups when I was an undergrad, but yeah, when I finished my undergrad, I went to grad school. Then I went to North Carolina state, got my PhD, came straight here. This is my 15th year teaching at UVA and, um, I'm old and I'm old. <laughs> And apparently I've yeah, shorn my hair. All right, give another question. Then we'll, right. get, to their, we'll um, get to the the, the class questions. Well, uh, okay. So, so specifically, you want one? Not well, whatever, class, whatever, you, okay. whatever. Because like. I was going to say, so in, in the syllabus, in the syllabus, it says that we'll be teaching ourselves, and and ourselves in that case is students, not you and me. Okay. Uh, so students will be teaching themselves uh, a, a programming language, specifically. Right. And then what will we be doing in class if we aren't teaching them the programming language? <laughs> oh, I love this question because there are so many people that come to this class and think this is the class where they're just going to teach us how to do Python and Django and Heroku, and that's it. And the funny thing is, that's not it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that's just the means to an end. That's just the means to an end. We are here to teach you about what it's like to build software from the beginning, from requirements, understanding what the user wants through designing that software. So doing design documents, understanding um, different design choices. When would you need something more secure, less secure, things like that. Through the actual implementation, through testing, and then release. As far as Django goes, I know jack squat about, I mean, I, I can kind of do it. Yeah. But uh, you don't want to come to us for Django help. You want to go to the TAs because they're the ones that have done this project in the previous semesters. Yeah, we know enough to get by, mm -hmm. but they know more than we do. The purpose of the class is the software development life cycle. And the, uh, the, build, the, the actual nuts and bolts of stuff, well, you're going to learn how to learn it. Yeah. So, yeah, you are going to have to do some on your own. And if I, and if I can add to that i mean learning how to learn some language or some development environment or whatever i mean that is what you will be doing in industry uh, you know it, the the languages the tools they're going to change over time uh when i was in undergrad uh, there weren't that many universities that had you know an android there weren't many universities class. yeah well oh, okay. there, there were there were I'm, there were universities but they didn't have things like an android class no. uh there was no java granted i went to west virginia university so they don't have a lot of these still uh we'll hold on the west virginia jokes for today okay all right we'll start um, on thursday all right is that it. fair okay. yeah um, i have nc state jokes so yeah but uh no so like things like javascript were not widely taught when i was in undergrad which really wasn't that long ago. I mean, I, I graduated in 2010 from undergrad. So things will change very quickly. 2010? Yeah, God, things, things will change very quickly when you're in industry. And, and you, part of that is going, part of your job is going to be keeping up with those changes yep. over time. Yep. Um, and so, so learning how to quickly dive in and teach yourself some development environment is, is an important skill set. So let's uh, transition, you know, that into, into kind of the overall theme of the class so yep. that you kind of know what's going on. So, okay, we're doing the bit here about doing the podcast, although this does allow us to not have to record one later this week, which we were <laughs> both in favor of. Um, but we are a team. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been working together for over a year now. Um, we, uh, when we were a virtual, we actually would tag team in each other's Zoom uh, lectures, mm -hmm. commenting. It worked out really well. 
So this is going to be actually different for us having to go back to I'm the primary instructor for y'all for the 11 o'clock. And McBurney is going to be the primary instructor for the two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Are there going to be times that McBurney will be here? Yeah, there are. Maybe next Tuesday, as a matter of fact. Are there going to be times where I'm going to be in the two o'clock? Yeah. But we are equal partners in this. Mm -hmm. And um, the only time that we're going to say, hey, if you have something, you need to come to me or you need to go to McBurney. It's mainly just so that we can keep the load balanced. Right. So if one of you in here, heaven forbid, contracts COVID, something happens, whatever it might be, y'all should contact me and the two o'clock will contact McBurney. But for everything else, you know, this is not a, oh, dad said, no, I'm going to go ask the other dad. That's not how that's going to work. Okay. Um, our TA staff, we have going to have 20 to 25 TAs. We have 20 already hired. We might hire another five. All of them have had this class before, have TA'd for us before. They are awesome. They know exactly how the Django projects work. They know exactly how to help you out with getting stuff on Heroku. We have a very talented staff. Okay. What is the main arc of the class? It is the project, right? In class, we are going to be teaching you the requirements, design, implementation, testing. What is it like to build real software? You're going to be on teams of five building real software. What are you building? What are you going to build? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that's part of the fun of the class, we think. So between now and Tuesday, you need to think of ideas. Next Tuesday, not, not now. No not now, No Tuesday. time travel required no. or allowed. Or no, if you, have a, if you have a time turner, if you are Hermione Granger and you have a time turner, those are forbidden. Damn it. See? <laughs> I knew there'd be one. All right. Um, next Tuesday, you are going to pitch ideas on the theme my life as a UVA student would be so much better if I just had blank. My life as a UVA student would be so much better if I just had blank. You can find this if you go to the project section of the web page. Okay? Now, what does this mean? What projects have we gotten on this theme before? Well, one of them was where is the closest toilet? And you would rate them as to how clean they were. So that's one that we built. I'm not overly proud of that one, but that was one. There was one that rated all of the staff machines on grounds and told you which ones had the best stuff at any given time. That one was a little weird. I would like to avoid the which, dr which bars can you get the most drunk at? We had that one too. Um, eh? That's one where it's like, hey, NBC 29 wants to talk about your class. Oh, uh, what are you teaching kids to do? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, but we've also had things like textbook exchange or study buddy finders or um, uh, meetup finders for like finding people to go play basketball with or something like that. We have had um, exercise gamification things. That was last year's theme. What other things have we had in this general realm? Um, well, so I, I, w I was here last year where we did the, the first one was under COVID and the second was the app to have okay, that's fair. when students came back. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and so we did have, we did have a study group finder. We had, um, we had an app where, or we had a suggestion where it was track which businesses have either changed in some way with COVID. So for instance, are they on a restricted menu? Are they permanently closed? Have they been replaced? Yeah. Were they temporarily closed? But have they opened yet? Uh, things like that. Yep. Um, so the sky is the limit. Yeah. They just have to make an argument that is going to fit that theme. Yeah. So on Tuesday of next week, we will pitch your ideas and you will vote. And two o'clock will also vote. And then we will take the top probably three vote getters. Actually, what we'll probably do is we'll take the top five ish vote getters mm -hmm. and then McBurney and I will look at them and figure out which ones are feasible right because sometimes there's gonna be some that are pitched that are just like I want to build um a new version of Microsoft Word just for class <laughs> okay who wants to do that everyone's voting for like what the hell no we're not <laughs> building that I want to build Halo where we just run around grounds um Okay. <laughs> Do that in Django. Let me see that. 
All right, so uh, we want to make sure you know what is going on. Um, I, I, one more, more quick thing, and then I want to, to turn it over kind of to some discussion and asking us questions, and that is what's going on with masks? What's going on with COVID? What's going on with how our class is going to operate? If you go to the syllabus, you will find a section on COVID po policies and protocols. Um, everyone is coming back with different levels of comfort. And that is okay. All right. I know you all are, you know, awesome and amazing and invincible and y'all ready to be back amongst people. And that's, that's fantastic. And I'm so excited that you get to do that and be back with your friends. I'm still scared. Okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, um, I have a daughter. She's super cute. I mean, super cute. Very. And ve very cute. Yeah. Um, and she can't be vaccinated yet. And I have, uh, you know, other family members that have health concerns that if, if they got COVID, it would be terrible. So, you know, me, I'm going to stay distant. I'm going to stay masked. Even if the mask requirement goes away until Sammy is vaccinated, that's her name. You'll, I'll just say that. Um, I'm going to stay masked. I'm going to be holding online office hours, which honestly worked better for me because I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I, I, once I didn't have to stop, I, I didn't have to touch y'all's nasty laptops. <laughs> that was awesome. You know, you, kids would come to the office like, here's my, what's wrong with my coat? Creak. And like Doritos would fall out. There's stains that I can't identify. There's some, uh, there were some new uh, Paleolithic civilizations on a laptop last, last semester. They had discovered fire. It was really impressive. Oh, my. It's like, hey, look, don't use the left side of my trackpad, only the right side of my trackpad. Don't hit the escape key, because if you do, the battery fault, it's like all this, like, like, no, you connect to Zoom, and I'll just look at your screen. <laughs> Way nicer for me. Yeah. So that's that's me. And so, you know, we're, we're all professionals here. We want to respect everyone. That's where I'm coming from. So don't, you know, don't take it as me being a complete jerk for this. Some of you will think I'm a complete jerk for totally other reasons. I'm used to that. That's fine. That's why I'm a teacher. Um, Nick, Bernie, how are you? What, what are you feeling? Yeah. So um, my, my current situation is, of course, I'm, I'm biting by the university policy. Uh, right now, I am not in a situation like you where I don't have uh, close family members that I see every day who are particularly at risk. However, my stepfather has asthma and had whooping coughs to kids, so he already has a lot of lung scarring. So like if he's coming to town, my office hours are going online for a little bit. Um, so, it, it, you know, it, it's sort of an evolving situation. I mean, it's an evolving situation regardless, as we all know, uh, monitoring the news. Right now, my plan is to have uh, some in-person and some online office hours that will potentially change as the semester evolves, either if things look safer, moving all my office hours in person or the opposite direction. Uh, it kind of just depends. Uh, so and that and that's something I want to emphasize. We don't know what things are going to look like in two weeks, <laughs> whether that's going to be. Oh, well, look. Things have settled down with the Delta variant. Right. There's no mass exposures on grounds. Hey, we can, uh, you know, do away with mass mandate or whatever. I will still wear a mask just generally to try to limit exposure vectors. Um, and I would still request you wear a mask if you're in my office one on one, just because it's a small room, not a lot of airflow. But uh, again, I kind of have to monitor the situation uh, yeah. and, and, and judge accordingly. And I, and I would encourage everyone to do the same. And, and, and just remember, uh, just, one more thing again, mental health is health. And if you are a person that has issues with anxiety or depression or anything like that, and it has been exacerbated by this, that's okay. Um, we understand that we, we will work with people as necessary, just as we hope that you would work with us, which is why if you never feel comfortable coming to this room again, okay, we are, we are on zoom. I'm on zoom right now. Hi, zoom friends. Um, it is being recorded. 
our online textbook, which we are well behind in getting posted, has all the videos we did from last year. And so all, you, all the material is still available. You will still have access to us through Discord. You can see the live stuff through Zoom or recorded. Tests are not going to be in person because I can think of nothing more stressful to me than to be masked up trying to take quizzes, worrying about the, you know, the Omega variant or whatever it is by the time we get to December, right? That is not a fair way for us to assess your knowledge. So we are going to try and make sure that we are fair in that way. Okay. Let, uh, yep, you are getting right to it. Matter of fact, here's what I'm going to ask you all to do. If you feel comfortable to turn to the people next to you and tentatively, hey, people, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, hi, people, um, and share, hang on. 2,000 years later. Did we just do the I need a haircut today? But, hey, right. my, my wife is an elementary school librarian, and it works there, and it works here. All right, fair so enough. I, I, will, I will defer to her. All right. Let's go to our live studio audience. <laughs> All right, go right ahead. What's your question? That is a great question. So um, last year, last year, all of our tests were online, right? They were take-home questions, things like that. What we did was we moved all of our questions from a lower level sort of name the, name the phases of development sort of question to here is a, um, a page description of a piece of software, of a software development scenario. Read this and analyze it, and they're more kind of essayish sort of questions. Now, granted, that means the quiz is like three questions total. I mean, they're not meant to be very long at that point, but they are much more higher on Bloom's taxonomy and more things like um, synthesis of information and showing us that you understand how to build uh, a, a system. So. We felt last year that they were effective. Um, there was only, well, there was one instance where someone turned in someone else's test and then emailed us and said, oops, I meant to turn in mine. And we're like, what the, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, I really just meant to turn in my test, not the other test that someone gave me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheat better, y'all. Um, so. Yeah, no, I, 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 I appreciate this approach because our goal really isn't, Hey, can you memorize the right buzzwords? Our I goal is, care. can yeah. you can you apply the style of thinking that an engineer should have approaching a software problem? <clears throat> that that's our goal. Yeah. And it, and if you accidentally say one, you know, say uh, instead of maintenance, you say something like long term development or whatever. If you mean the same thing, you know, we we would prefer right. that if right. if you understand the concepts underlying it. And, and the difficulties, et cetera. I, I think one positive of us teaching online is that it really made us evaluate what the real learning objectives for the class were and to kind of strip away some of the BS that admittedly I added the year before. So, <laughs> so we fixed it and, and, and it was good. And so we think that these assessments are fair and that they are, I mean, could you still have someone else write it for you? Yeah, you could. We're not supposed to tell them that. They'll never figure it out. Oh, if yeah. Don't tell, don't tell them about Chegg. Oh, no. They'll never hear about this ever. Did you know Chegg actually emailed me and said, hey, we'll pay you for your test? I'm like, are you yeah. cut you're cutting out the middleman. <laughs> <laughs> How much did they offer? No, I, no. $1,000. <laughs> A thousand dollars for a certain amount of stuff, and I was like, well, "Why don't I just tell the students to pay me?" That seems like a really bad idea. Let's not do that. We'll just cut that out of the recording. No, that's not in the podcast. That's not in the podcast. Other questions? Well, she had. Yes, sir. Uh, so this is a great question. Uh, so to repeat the question, oh, yes, we need to do that. Um, the question was, "How do we form the teams?" And then, what do we do to try to ensure parity among the teams? So the first thing that we're going to let you know now is this. You don't get to pick your teammates because when you get a job, you don't get to pick your teammates. Uh, and 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 there's all there's also pedagogical benefits where you know if you know everyone on your team ahead of time, it's it's actually sometimes more likely that one person ends up kind of doing all the work. So one is you aren't going to pick your teammates. You're going to be on a team of we're still doing five, right? Yeah, five. So a team of five. 
And that team of five is going to be formed uh, through a process that we'll use. There's a survey we use, and it will ask some questions like, how comfortable are you with Java? How comfortable Python. are you? Not Java. I or, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I, I, was, I was teaching 2110 over the summer, and it's still in my brain, How comfortable are you with cross-stitch? Yeah, how, how, how comfortable are you with Python? Uh, we'll look at, for instance, how well you do on the Django practice, which we'll talk about that soon. Um, you know, we'll, we'll look at some various metrics that we can use. Uh, and we will try our best to kind of form teams. One, based on trying to make sure everyone gets onto their first choice projects. We do or, and, and more than 95% of class ends up on their first choice project. Yep. Um, the second is then we try to break it up so that way we're not putting like one team is all the, the Python experts and one team is all the, the people who, you know, maybe didn't take 1110 and maybe took Java. And so they don't know Python very well. You know, we're, we're going to do what we can to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, again, there's no foolproof approach to this, but uh, we feel most of the teams end up with, with very good projects. So, so are there horror stories? Yes. I'm yeah. sure you've heard some of them, but here's the thing. I would in a normal semester, 80% of the teams, at least, come back and say, I have my new besties. Like, the teams work great. Mm -hmm. The next 18, 15 to 18% of the teams are like, I tolerated them. We got through the class. We were fine. It wasn't, I mean, it was fine. And then there's that five, two to 5% that's like, Sheriff ruined my college career forever. Yeah. And those are the posts you see on Reddit. Um, <laughs> yes. Or course forum, actually. Um, so yes, we do have some teams that, that will have issues. Now, here's, here, here's the thing. The sooner you let us know there's a problem, the sooner we can take action. There, are, it, it, Every semester, at the very end, I have a student crying in my office hours saying, I'm doing all the work and no one is helping me. And why is it? And I feel so bad for that student because that student like a lot of UVA students thinks they can just take the project on their back and just do it. I've seen this countless times. Yep. It doesn't work for them because they just collapse and it doesn't work for the others because they got like, we're not assessing their actual learning. So as soon as like after the first few sprints, the first few checkpoints, you're like, Hey, Hey, McBurney, Hey, McBurney, I got a captain loser pants on my team. Can you have a talk with this person? Uh, most of those conversations go pretty well. Yeah. You know, we, we talk to them and say, look, your team is having issues. What's up? And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I've been stressed out. I promise I'll, I'll do better. And they do. But there will be, there will always be the captain loser pants of the class who we will never see ever again. And then we'll show up at the end and say, where's my project grade? And we'll say, in the garbage, where it belongs. Because if we find out that you did nothing on your project, if you did not help, if you were a hindrance, I don't, we don't care what you do on the tests. Yeah. We will fail you. Yes. Period. And to it's be clear, built into the syllabus. Yeah. We will fail you. To be clear, that's an exceedingly small number of it students. Is. That is, that it is, is. Uh, no, nowhere higher than... than like two 30, or 40 kids a, a year. Okay. <laughs> no, no, like the, I think like two to, we had at most two to 3%, I think in the fall. And admittedly, that was the first semester where it was fully online. So yeah, there's I a mean, lot of mitigating factors there. We don't go out of our way to do that. We no. do go out of our way to try to intervene if we're told something is wrong. However, if you are nice and give nothing but good evaluations because you want to be nice to your teammates, and then literally the last eval, you're like, yeah, I was being nice, but they actually did nothing, zero. Guess what? We can't do anything at that point, and uh, you... Well, yeah. we can. It's, it's just harder for right, us it's, to It's harder this. for us to, to change things at that yeah. point. So, I, so that's, that, that's not to say, like, go into the first checkpoint and give all your teammates, like, zero participation. Obviously not. 
But what we mean is... I am God's gift to programming, yeah. and my teammates are horrible. Yeah, no, don't, obviously don't do that. But, no. like, do do approach it honestly, um, the, the avows, because if we can address an issue earlier, the outcomes are uniformly much, 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 much better. better. Yep. So... And- Okay. It helps you in the long run. It does. It does. Um, know that our goal is for your teams to succeed. Yeah. The TAs are here for that. We are here for that. We will do what we can always to help you do that. But if, want- you, if you're in a job and one of your coworkers at the job is literally not doing anything, you go to management. We're management. Yeah. And, and yeah, we want you to leave this class with the understanding obviously that we're teaching we also want you to leave this class with something cool for your portfolio yeah we really do yeah and uh, we really love like a lot of the projects we see are just tremendous and they really are helpful uh in a portfolio which you know that's something we yep always a good thing okay uh, other questions these are all great other questions from the class otherwise we can go to the to the sheet uh over here on the right yeah yeah, so so um, the 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 platform we are using is Django is your language. Uh, sorry, no, it's not. Python is your language. Django is the framework where you're going to build the app mm-hmm. in. So if you're thinking like Angular or things like that, that's kind of what it's like. It's not, but it. I mean, that's the idea. Heroku is the is the hosting service, and actually, it is. Heroku is hosted on AWS mm-hmm. in this weird kind of snake eats its own tail thing. Um, GitHub is where your code will live. And there's another service called Travis CI, which is continuous integration. That's a tool that constantly runs test cases to make sure your code works. So the idea is you build your app locally, test it locally, push to GitHub. Travis sees that you've pushed something, pulls your code, builds it, tests it, if it works, it deploys it to Heroku, and now your app is live on the internet. The reason we use these tools, and this is one of the questions. One of the questions was, um, what about AWS or Azure or anything like that? <clears throat> we use these tools because they, they work well together. The learning curve is lower. AWS has a relatively high learning curve for something. So does Azure. Heroku if you set up your GitHub repo properly, it just works, which that's what we want. We have tried things in this class like using Docker containers. That did not work. That was horrible. Um, I love Docker. It didn't work for the class. We have considered using Ruby on Rails and PHP and other languages. The learning curve is too high because you already know Python, so why do that? So we have chosen these because they mo- make the most sense for us. And no, you can't change. You cannot say, well, I'm going to do my app in JavaScript. No, no, sorry. (laughs) No, I can't grade that. Yeah. Second question. Are we allowed to do that? We are not an HCI class. (laughs) But you want to talk about code citing and how we treat that here? So um, in this class, you know, we fully expect that you're going to say you're going to not know how to do something in Django and you're going to look it up online or and, HTML or, or, or HTML or, or, you know, if yeah. you're trying to do some CSS or whatever, if you find something online that you want to use, that is fine. Just cite it. And, it, and while you're pulling that up, the good, He's going to pull up a format for citation. You don't have to use this exact format. We're not going to check for that. All we care is that if I see that you, you know, got some segment of code or adapted it from somewhere online, that's fine. I just need to be able to find it. Yep. That's all. And, and, you know, so, so if it's from Stack Overflow and you link the Stack Overflow page, hey, guess what? I found it. There it is. Uh, if you say, oh, yeah, I talked to my brother and he talked to a guy that found a guy. No, because I'm not, I'm not going to play that game of telephone to figure out where the information came from. But that's a normal thing to do. Yeah, I mean, no that, developer knows every yeah. piece of code. I mean, I mean, there's a very different mindset from I'm, I'm also teaching intro programming. And there we generally don't want students using things like Sacred Flow, et cetera, because largely 
they'll be using things without understanding them. I don't worry about that here because you're now more experienced programmers. You have more practice. You know how at this point to at least read and, and interpret code or, or process it in that way. So it's a very different exercise at that point. Here's another way, here's another like wrinkle in this. Let's say you cannot get, I don't know, Google login to work for your app. That's a requirement. You have to have Google login for your app. And you say on Discord publicly, I have no idea how to do this. Can someone help me? And someone else in this class says, oh, here's the tutorial I used. Try this. Two thumbs up yes. by all means. That is what we want from this class. Here's that. Here's the copy of my .py file. Yeah. You see the difference. You right. know, I mean, but by all means, share resources, please. Yeah. That's what Discord's going to be for. Yeah. And also for pictures of my cats. And also for pictures of his cats. So let's talk about Discord. Yeah. We used Discord a, like a lot last year. It was where our class lived. And it worked really well for online office hours. We gave every team their own Discord channels, private channels. And that was easy for TAs to meet with teams. You didn't have to set up something different. We're going we're gonna to try using Discord again in kind of a model with us being in person. So once it's set up, if you're in class and you don't feel comfortable raising your hand to ask a question, at least for y'all, I don't know, he might handle it different at 2 o'clock. <laughs> But you could post in Discord and other people in the class could answer, or I'll be walking past my laptop and I could ask, answer the question in Discord. My office hours will be in Discord. Um, TA office hours will be in Discord. So we will get you into Discord when it's time. It's not quite ready yet, but- oh, No, it's ready. Oh, well, but we haven't added them. Well, yeah, no, we need to- Yeah, they're not add them, But yeah, yeah it's, it's ready to- It's be ready. Added. Yeah. More questions? Yes, ma'am. So um, we, we, we actually got rid of lab. This was one of the changes from COVID. So in the long, long ago in the way back time, if you can, if you can picture back to 2019, which is tough, that was at least 18 years ago. Yeah. Um, in, in 2019, the lab on Mondays at two o'clock, three, two, one o'clock, three o'clock and five o'clock something, you would come to Olson 01 and meet with your team and the TA would walk around and check your projects. And then we made you stay there like it was detention and work on your projects. And then COVID hit and we're like, oh my God, how are we gonna do that? And then we thought, oh my God, why were we doing that? Yeah. And so it makes so much more sense now to say, well, what your lab is, is that is the meeting time with your team of five plus your team's assigned TA. Every TA will be assigned three teams, okay? So sometime on Sunday, sometime on Monday, one of those two days every week, you will have a, let's call it 10 to 15 minute meeting, your team of five plus the TA. You can do it in person. You can do it virtual. Either one's fine. But that is when they will check your progress of your, your um, project. And there, there are gonna be requirements six weeks out of, Six weeks out of the semester, there will be hard requirements you have to meet to make sure you're on track and you'll earn points for those. But every other week, it'll be just kind of a check-in. That's lab. So you don't know your lab time yet, lab time, until your team's assigned. And then your team's assigned. Uh, one, one thing, actually, I do want to add to that, and this, this relates to the Discord. Um, in, the, in the Discord, every group is going to have a set of channels for their team that they can use. We can add more if you feel you need it, whatever. Um, we generally would ask that you would communicate with your team over Discord oh, as opposed to GroupMe or other tools. And here's why. Yep. If, you do, if you use some other communication forum that we have no way of getting access to or monitoring, and then you say, well, Steve hasn't even posted in our group discussions, there's no way for us to verify that. And we're not gonna be added to your group means. Yeah. So we, um, we're not going to like post pictures of Sammy. Yeah. We're not going to just randomly look at the channels, but if there is an issue, it is a, it is something that lets us go back and look at what the discussions have been, yep. et cetera. Uh, if everything's fine, we're never going to look at your discord channels because everything's fine. So and we will mute them. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mute them anyway, but that's like, I'm, yeah, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. What else? Yes, ma'am. Can you plug my podcast on your podcast? 
<laughs> What's the name of your podcast? Um, it's for the Girls Who Code Club at UVA. Oh, that's awesome. It's called Girls Who Code the Podcast. Girls Who Code the Podcast. But it's so, spelled... send, send, send me an email. Send me an email and I'll put it in the show notes. It's spelled H O O. Hey. We, we, we have a grand total of, I think, 14 listeners, according to Anchor. So, yeah, so it's not, you know, we're, we're not. And, and most of them are our relatives. Most of them are my parents. My stepdad listens to Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Plus one listener. That's, that's how we went from 13 to 14. Oh, wow. What else? Well, let's get, let's get some that have been asked here um, that, that someone might not want to ask yet. Um, Hey, hey, Will. Yeah. Are there any embarrassing teaching moments you're willing to share? I'm actually gonna need a minute to think of that. Okay. Um, okay. Here's one. Here's one for me. Um, how many of you have been in uh, the Big Gilmer? Some of you are like, "What's grounds?" I'm just here now. Um, the Big Gilmer lecture hall. Um, it's kind of steep. Okay, I tripped on the top step and I made it three quarters of the way down. <laughs> Mike was on, it was like boom, 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 boom. And I just sat there, and the students were like, Sheriff, you okay? I'm like, class is dismissed. <laughs> so that was fun. I'm actually having a hard time coming up with one. I thankfully, thankfully, it's not like, oh, I turned on my Zoom camera at the wrong time. That thankfully never happened. <laughs> I, I did have a hot mic, uh, not not me, but a student in my class who uh, had a hot hot mic. I don't know who it was because they didn't show up in the list of speaking people. Yeah. But who did refer to me as a bald jackass, which, <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, points for accuracy. But, <laughs> like, uh, I, okay, so I, well, on those lines, I had a student who turned in a test, put the test down, put the test down, then looked at me and said you're a smart ass and then walked out and i said okay and i picked up the test that's all who it was it's like yeah you gotta at least okay. put that in the middle of the stack you gotta at least first. slide that in the middle of the stack yeah. you gotta be a little um yeah okay let's see here how did you know that you wanted to do computer science or i, I like this part of it how do i know and remind myself that i'm supposed to be here no, but think about that for a second. So, I mean, I, I don't know how you got into computing in the mm -hmm. first place. Um, I, I was the kid that always liked to take apart things and, you know, and that. But when I, went to, when I went to undergrad, I was convinced I was going to go into law. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. My brother went into law, but I, but, um, which is funny because now he's an assistant district attorney and his name is Sheriff, which is actually kind of funny. Um, and he like he'll go on he'll go like, uh, like law and order style. He'll go to the crime scene. And he gets to wear a vest that says Sheriff. Because that's because it never mind. Okay, fine. <laughs> but but you know, people come to this class or or the, the earlier class. I mean, honestly, if you survive 2150 and you're still here, you probably are fine. Um, you know, everyone, as long as you can, you know, wish upon Florian's head or whatever, and then you 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 get out. Um, but you're gonna run into things that you don't know how to program, and you are going to think. Oh my God, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why am I subjecting myself to learning Django? Um, and those moments can be tough, right? Because you are, you are overcoming that moment of transitioning from a static learner of, okay, I've just been given, this is how I do a for loop. This is how I do this to now I have to be an engineer and discover what the solution is. And sometimes you have to learn how to get over that hump. And the first time you do that can be hard. But I can guarantee you that by the end of the semester, if you think the project is hard, but you get to the end and you have a project that you're, that you're proud of, I mean, we see it in the demos that you come out and say, like, I made this. It's not just, oh, it's not the hash lab, which you just don't want to ever look at again. It's something that, look, this is something that I could show other people and say, look, I built a thing. It does a thing. It's on the internet. And, and that, that, if you come out of that and you have that moment of pride, that can, that can help you know that. Um, let's see. Oh, well, here's one uniquely for you. Okay. Is game design research still a thing? 
Um, is game. So, so what this is referring to is if you go to my webpage, the, Florian and I are the two game design teachers, but I haven't taught game design in a while. And we haven't, we, we did do some game design research. Uh, so those of you thinking ahead to senior thesis type stuff. And these are things like students were building um, VR simulations of the Revolutionary War, like walking around Revolutionary War era town for elementary school kids. No, they weren't in the battle, okay? It was like, here's what life was like sort of stuff. And um, that got put on hold for a little bit just because um, I, I took on some other responsibilities, but I'll be coming back to it. So yeah, it, it is coming back. And I hope to, I actually hope to be teaching video game design next fall. That's my hope, my hope. Back to y'all. Have y'all come up with any other questions for us about the class, about what we're doing? Yes, ma'am. All right. Here's something we are gonna ask you to do from time to time. This is show of fingers. Five fingers means yes, absolutely. I completely understand, all on board. I know exactly what's going on. One is I have no blessed clue what you're talking about. No, this is horrible, I hate it. Please be careful which one finger you show us, okay? By show of fingers, are you excited to be back in the class? By show of fingers, how many of you still would feel like some days you just want to not come and just do it virtually? Mm -hmm. How many of you, how many of you are, and you don't have to hold up, you don't feel like, are, are a little nervous about being back in person? It, it, it varies completely. All around the room, all the questions. So. Be kind to each other, all right? Um, do we have any questions we want to end on or are there any remaining questions? Yes, sir. Well, um, I, I see no reason to, it's like a bunch of black squares oh, still. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> I, I, I want to answer this one, okay? Right. Uh, for my class, I support whatever your mechanism is for note taking. Some of you prefer handwriting some of you prefer taking in one note on your laptop some otherwise but you are not to come in here and work on the latest valorant raid or destiny raid or play hearthstone or anything like that i have stopped class to stop and critique someone's wow raid <laughs> I walked around and this person was in a World of Warcraft dungeon and they were a druid tank. I am a druid main. I stopped class and kept critiquing them until they wiped. Then I was very happy with myself. <laughs> if you would like to play me in Hearthstone, that's another conversation. Or play him in Heroes of the Storm, if anyone still plays that game. Um, <laughs> Smash Brothers, uh, I, yes. We, we both suck yet. Hey, now, I'm, I'm quite good with Pyra and Mithra. All right. I am. So, know that you are a distraction if you bring that here. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it is, it is different being back. It is exciting. It is still a little scary in some ways, at least to me. But it's wonderful to see a row of shining tops of your heads as you're looking at the laptops because that's just so much better than black squares, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, take care, be safe, and we'll see you back here on Thursday. Bye. And watch for falling ghosts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah our, our closer.